Howdy. Welcome back to the shop on a rainy Saturday afternoon. Today I'm going to be doing me a little project that I've wanted to do for a while. This is going to be a pressure pot to put 90 weight gear grease in. And I'm just going to air it up to about 15, 20 PSI, not very tight. But it'll be where you can put grease in it, air it up, and then squirt grease into your differentials, transmissions, whatever. Uh, it's just a pain in the neck and uh, the little Chevrolets that I drive to get actually get grease into the transmit or into the differentials on them and they leak like a sieve. Now a smart man would just fix the leaks but it's easier for me to spend three days building something than it is to fix it right. So anyway, and I've wanted one of these for a long time. So this is a refrigerant jug. Uh, it's a 410A jug. This is part of a 22 jug. Uh, now, a word about this. You are not supposed to refill these. You are not supposed to reuse them. This is non-reusable. Do not attempt. Uh, you will die, and black helicopters will show up in the middle of the night and arrest you and take you to Siberia. But anyway, all that being said, I cut the top with a hole saw. Uh, drilled that out. This is a piece of half inch pipe. It's cut off. It's cut off crooked at the bottom. And when I put this in here, yep, when I put this in here, it will not plug up. You know, I can let this part touch the bottom, but it, it won't plug up. It won't uh, seal at the bottom unless I turn it the wrong way, and then it's probably never going to work. Uh, this is a piece of 22 jug. Uh, now, this stuff is so thin you can cut it with a pair of 10 snips. These jugs are not very thick. Uh, it's probably about 40 thousandths thick, something like that. Now, the 410A jug is a little bit thicker than a 22 jug. 22 jug weighs about 7 pounds and 8 ounces empty. And I think a 410A jug weighs about nine pounds and six ounces empty. So anyway, my fill cap is just a piece of two inch pipe. I've cut it off, cut a piece in two. Um, and here's the, the lid for it. Uh, this was galvanized. I throw it in a bucket of uh, Ofaso and let it soak for a couple hours to burn the zinc off of it because I don't really like smelling that crap not very good for you. But that's going to get welded in the middle. Pipe's going to go over here. And to air this up, this is called a snifter valve. And what it is, it's just a bicycle valve with a eighth, they make these an eighth and quarter uh, pipe threads. Uh, you can get these at real plumbing supply houses. I doubt Home Repo or Slows or somewhere like that would even know what you're talking about. But it's called a sniffer valve or snifter. And this is just a 3 8 nut. I'm just going to weld this nut down and uh, use that for my thread alet because I, I know that there's no way I can tap threads into this and they'll hold. It's just too thin. So I'm going to weld me a thread alet on there and uh, drill it and tap it for eighth in NPT. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is get over there to my welding machine and weld my foot on there so this stupid thing's not flopping around and, and fighting me. So I'll get this welded on there and then uh, maybe do a few other things and then we'll, we'll come back here in a minute. Okay, so I got my little thread let welded in there and uh, I've got my cap sitting just loosely screwed on to my nipple there, and I've got some blue monster tape, Teflon tape, wrapped around those threads. So we're going to see if that will keep splatter from sticking to it, or if that's going to melt and make a god-awful mess, and I'm going to regret it till the end of my life. So anyway, that's that. And I forgot to mention at the onset, this jug has not ever had any oil in it. So... It should be safe to weld on. Nevertheless, I have means by which if it woofs, if it, if it 
decides to pop a little bit, it has a pressure relief. When I get this tacked on on this two inch, I'm gonna take his cap off so that if this thing decides to go whoop, it's got somewhere to, to whoop through. It will make you a little bit nervous if they do that when you're welding on a vessel that has some fumes in there and it goes woof. It, it will make you poop a little bit. Uh, to get around that, you can put uh, nitrogen CO2. You can either, even go to the grocery store and get some dry ice and bust up dry ice and throw in there and you don't have the problem. But Ben's, this vessel has never had any oil in it. We're probably pretty good. If it blows up and kill me, oh well. I love you, darling. We'll see you later. So, there's the top of it. I wouldn't call that welded, but there's some, the top of it with some wire melted down to it. Uh, it dawned on me when I got this tacked on there real good that there are two layers of metal here and they're not welded together except in a few spot welds. So this whole thing may not work. So I'm going to get my thread lead tapped and uh, put a cap on here and a cap on here and we'll pressure this thing up and see if it'll hold, hold a little pressure without blowing bubbles everywhere. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, my prophecy proved true. It was leaking in between where that handle was and, uh, and the top of the tank. So I'm gonna have to, I got it cut off of there as good as I could. I gouged it out with a torch. I'm gonna take my uh, little hazard fraught. This is a quarter inch trim router, which incidentally runs a quarter inch carbide burr like nobody's business. It is quite a bit fatter than a uh, die grinder, but uh, my old compressor is getting a little bit goofy and weak, and I don't like listening to a compressor roar. So this right here is what I use for stuff like this, and it works great. So anyway, I'm going to whittle all this weld out as much as I dare, and then go back over that two or three times and uh, weld it back up. It's getting on late of an afternoon this afternoon, and I'm probably going to wrap this video up and do a part two and quite possibly a part three on it. And uh, we'll go from there. So anyway, y'all like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Drive safe. Watch for deer.